Hi there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is you're watching this. As always, happy whatever day it is you're watching this. And in fact, happy spring day. Uh, vernal equinox occurred early Tuesday morning. It is now officially spring. We're looking forward to some of those really good days, like today, for example. Anyway, hi again. Uh, welcome to Left Side of the Aisle. Uh, my name is Larry Erickson. Uh, I'm your host. And for about the next half hour or so, I'm going to be your ranter and raconteur, talking about things important to me I think deserve your attention. This is episode uh, 49 of Left Side of the Aisle. It's for the week of March 21st to 28th, 2012. Uh, as always, if you have any comments, questions, reactions, brickbats, whatever, uh, they can be sent to me directly. The uh, email address is whoviating, W-H-O-V-I-A-T-I-N-G, at AOL.com. Uh, and if you didn't catch that, my website, Lotus Surviving a Dark Time, will be up around here somewhere a couple of times during the show. Uh, and you can go there and get the email address from there. Uh, I do ask that if you do email me that you, in the subject line, you include something like your cable show or left side of the aisle or something like that so that uh, I know it's not spam. And uh, uh, I sometimes a little slow about it, but uh, I do answer my mail. So... You might have to be a little patient. Um, anyway, this is another week when I got all kinds of stuff that I would like to talk about. I'm not going to have the time to. Um, that uh, I decided, in fact, I told my wife the other day, says, you know, what I really need for this show, I need a, um, I need a desk, an hour, and a co-host. <laughs> so, want to be a co-host? Let me know. We'll work on it. Any event. Uh, things I'm going, to, I'm going to try to get through this week. Uh, the first is a, a few more dispatches from the ongoing war on women and on women's rights and women's ability to choose. First, on the Forrest Gump stupid is as stupid does front, we have Kansas Governor Sam Brownback. Uh, now, he favors allowing religiously affiliated institutions, not religious institutions, but religious affiliated institutions like a church or a, or, or, or a, uh, not a church, I'm sorry, a school or a, uh, a hospital to uh, allow them to deny their employees access to birth control as part of their uh, health insurance coverage. When he was faced with the question of what any woman employee of one of these places who wants or needs birth control as part of her health coverage could do, he said, find another job. Frankly, Governor, I think the one who needs a new job is you. All right, next on the picture them wearing a bullseye front, uh, a new bill is moving through the uh, Tennessee House of Representatives that would require the state to gather and publish the names of any doctor who performs an abortion along with the location where the procedure is done. Along with, get this, the age, race, county of residence, marital status, education level, and number of children of the woman patient, plus how many times she has been pregnant. The uh, chief sponsor of this bill says that the only purpose of it is so that people on both sides of the debate can really see just how prevalent abortion actually is. And of course, if any doctor or any woman gets harassed or even murdered as the result of all their personal information being splattered out where any wacko can get a hold of it, well, that wouldn't have anything to do with him, would it? Of course not. It never does for these people. Okay, on yet another front in this war, the Idaho State Senate had just passed one of those idiotic ultrasound bills. These are the ones that uh, basically say that a pregnant woman who... Uh, uh, wants to end her pregnancy, doesn't really understand what being pregnant means and has to have it explained to her. And you want to know how dumb this bill is? It says that if after getting this required ultrasound, you still want to have an abortion, you have to have a second ultrasound. Oh, but don't worry. Don't worry about the cost. The state is going to maintain a list of places you can get free ultrasounds. This list uh, consists of the so-called pregnancy counseling centers, which are actually just fronts for rabid anti-abortion groups. In the course of the debate on this bill, Senator Chuck Winder, or Winder, I'm not sure how to pronounce him, he's the assistant majority leader there, uh, noted, uh, recognized that this bill does not even allow exemptions uh, for um, medical emergencies, rape, or incest 
He said, and I'm quoting him, I would hope that when a woman goes to a physician with a rape issue, that that physician will indeed ask about perhaps her marriage. Was this pregnancy caused by normal relations in a marriage, or was it truly caused by a rape? But no, he didn't mean that women might uh, lie in order, to, uh, in, uh, in order to get an abortion, might lie about being raped. Oh, no, that thought never, ever crossed his mind. No, it's just that you need to ask about this kind of stuff. If you're a doctor and a woman comes to you and says that she's been raped, well, what you need to do is to cross-examine her about her sex life to see if normal relations were actually involved. Jeez, these people are creepy. All right, but I'm going to go beyond the, uh, the stupid, uh, the bloodthirsty, and even the creepy into the right, outright horrifying. And I have to say that, again, this is not something new. It originally, the original thing was from a year ago, but I just learned about it recently, and it just has passed an anniversary. There's a woman named uh, uh, Bye Bye Shwai. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but I think that's correct. Bye Bye Shwai. She's now been in jail in Marion County, Indiana, Indiana again, um, for just over a year. This all started in December of 2010. She was eight months pregnant at the time. That's when her boyfriend told her that he was already married, that he had another family, and he was going back to them. She begged him to stay. He threw some money at her and left her apparently on her knees crying in the middle of a parking lot. She was utterly distraught. She was totally in despair. She tried to commit suicide by swallowing rat poison. Friends found her, got her to the hospital just in time. To give the the fetus the best chance of surviving, uh, it was delivered by caesarean section. But unhappily, the the child, who was given the name Angel, died four days later of a cerebral hemorrhage. Three months later, she was arrested for murder of the fetus. If convicted on this charge, she faces 45 to 65 years in prison. Indiana, you know, is just one of at least 38 states that have passed these so-called Unborn Victims of Violence Acts. Now, these, these laws were sold on the idea that they were protection for pregnant women against abusive partners. The idea was that uh, uh, in cases of assault and homicide... The, the fetus, and, and in some cases even the zygote, uh, would be regarded as a separate individual uh, with, uh, so that um, a crime, uh, harm done to the fetus by this abusive partner was a crime separate from the harm done to the woman. But as opponents predicted, at the time these bills were being passed, the main targets of these bills, the prosecutions under these bills, has not been abusive partners. It has been pregnant women. Hundreds of pregnant women have been brought up on charges under these bills on claims that something they did do or that they didn't do resulted in the harm to the fetus. Now, why? Is, you know, I, I mentioned last week that there had been, in 2011, there had been over a thousand anti-abortion bills introduced on the state level uh, in the in the U.S., and um, something like 130-something of them passed. Why this continuing flood of this legislation? Why this conti- Why such a big push on this? Well, I'll tell you why. They know they're losing. This is just like 10 years ago when there was this big push to get states to amend their state constitutions in order to define marriage as one man and one woman because they knew that in the long run of history they were losing on that. Uh, They know they're on the wrong side of history. They know that they're losing. They know that the tide will turn. They know at some time they will be ground up and washed away with the rest of the detritus. They know this. And they're just trying to do as much damage as they possibly can before that occurs. All right, as sort of a, a sort of a footnote to that, sort of a footnote to that, we have uh, an occasion of our occasional feature, uh, Everything You Need to Know. That's where you can know a lot about something in just a few sentences. In this case, uh, it's Everything You Need to Know 
about how you can know they know they're losing, if you can follow that. Everything you need to know in three sentences. On January 1st, 2010, same-sex marriage became legal in New Hampshire, uh, replacing a law that uh, established civil unions, which had been in effect since January 2008. Last week, New Hampshire representative, State Representative David Bates introduced a bill that would undo the same-sex marriage law and reinstate the civil unions law. This bill has the support of the Catholic Church of New Hampshire, It has the support of the National Organization for Marriage, both of which, along with Bates, vociferously and bitterly opposed civil unions when those were first proposed. But now, having lost on the same-sex issue, now they decide civil unions, hey, they're really not so bad after all. And that is everything you need to know. And um, we are now going to take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. Hi, we're back. This next thing is something I've been wanting to talk about literally for weeks, uh, literally for weeks, but it always has gotten pushed aside in favor of something else. I tried to get in a real short version of it last week, but I ran out of time again. So I'm going to do it now, right after the break, to make sure that I can get this in. It's about Syria. The revolt in Syria is a little over a year old now. The government of Bashar al-Assad marked that anniversary with what one observer very accurately called a Potemkin rally in Damascus, sort of a command performance, quite literally, to show support of the regime. Opponents of the regime also tried to mark the anniversary with demonstrations in various cities around the country, only to find their demonstrations being shot at by the military and police, which is something that pretty much any Uh, nonviolent protests can expect to happen in Syria these days. Uh, That that really is the way this movement started. It started with massive street protests, uh, particularly in Damascus, also in other cities, but particularly in Damascus, against the 40-year dictatorship in Syria, first of Hafez al-Assad and now of his son Bashar. Uh, Unarmed, massive unarmed street protests that got shot on And people were killed, shot on by the forces loyal to Assad. But the protests continued and continued to be shot at and continued. They couldn't break the will. The the protesters couldn't break the government. The government couldn't break the protesters. And what happened is that over time, this protest evolved into what now can only properly be called uh, an armed insurrection. Um... That insurrection and those, and especially the protests, which continue to go on, continue to be met with repression, continue to be met with violence. They started, these protests started as part of the, uh, what became known as the Arab Spring. Uh, this is the wave of protests that swept away old regimes in Tunisia, in Egypt, and just last month in Yemen. Uh, But the level of violent repression in Syria dwarfs that seen in the other three. In Yemen, the new government there just said that over 2,000 people were killed in the protests over the previous year. 2,000 people killed in the protest. That is just a fraction of those killed by the Assad regime in Syria in the last year. By best estimates, by best independent estimates, Maybe as many as something over 9,000 people have been killed by the Assad regime in the last year. His mass murder of his own people has earned him uh, uh, condemnation even in some perhaps unexpected places. Some time past now, the, the, the Arab League suspended Syria's membership in the League and has actually called on Assad to step down. They want him out, quit, gone. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem likely that will happen anytime soon. U.S. intelligence estimates say that he already uh, still has the support of the uh, of the government, uh, I'm sorry, uh, of the military and of the elite, and that his downfall, if it's to come, uh, is a matter of months, not weeks. Now, opposition forces in and out of Syria are calling for international armed intervention in Syria, 
and they are calling for, along with Saudi Arabia and Qatar, they are calling for the insurgents to be armed by the international community. Now, two things here. One is that I'm not going to give the rebels a free pass, okay? Uh, when you turn to violence, you turn to all that violence means. And the rebels have included things like car bombings. In fact, just this past weekend, uh, the weekend of, what would that be, the 18th, 19th, um, uh, that that weekend there were two large car bombings in, uh, in Syria. Scores of people were killed, scores more wounded by these blasts. But still at the same time, as is often true, the comparative levels of violence, well, they don't compare. They don't compare. I mean, one, we've got, on one hand, we've got scores killed on the one hand and over 9,000 on the other. That is not a balance. It's not even, in, uh, at least in some senses, a moral equivalence. The destruction and death that Assad has brought to the people of Syria has raised anger and fury and frustration all across the world. But here's the real thing, the real reason I wanted to bring this up, the real reason I wanted to talk about this. Some months ago on this show, I condemned Barack Obama. I called him a disgrace to his, uh, having disgraced himself and his office by his um, ignoring the War Powers Act and deliberately snubbing Congress uh, in pursuit of U.S. military involvement and intervention in Libya. Now, the justification for that intervention, you may recall, is the, the threat, the, the hypothetical threat of a possible massacre in the Libyan city of Benghazi if the forces of Muammar Gaddafi could succeed in capturing it. That was enough to provoke intervention. But now, in the face of a real, ongoing, day-by-day -day massacre in Syria, the response is... A sternly worded letter. Now, I want to be clear here. Uh, I'm not looking for intervention. I'm not looking for the international community to intervene in Syria. I find it very, very rare situations where making a bigger pile of bodies is a good answer to a pile of bodies. But what I do want is I want somebody to explain to me Explain to me in, in very simple words that I can understand. Explain to me very simple words why, in the face of a possible massacre in Libya, intervention was absolutely necessary, but in the face of an actual massacre in Syria, intervention is completely off the table, and explain it to me in words, if you possibly can, that do not depend on the letters O-I-L. All right, from there, we're going to move on to our weekly feature, the Outrage of the Week. The Outrage of the Week. And I got to tell you, the Outrage, Tennessee strikes again. One of the usual suspects. On March 18th, the Tennessee State Senate passed a bill which would allow teachers to help students, quote, understand, analyze, critique, and review in an objective manner the scientific strengths and scientific weaknesses of existing scientific theories, like, quoting again, biological evolution, the chemical origins of life, global warming, and human cloning. The main sponsor of the bill said that the idea behind it is that, again quoting, students should be encouraged to challenge current scientific thought and theory. In other words, they should be encouraged on a topic like evolution to substitute their own judgment or maybe that of their pastor for the consensus arrived at after 150 years of research and discovery. And to insist that global warming is a hoax because, well, Sean Hannity says so. But let's face facts here. I mean, evolution is not the only target of this legislation, but it's the primary one. This is what this is about. The go back to 1900 crowd can actually get creationism taught in schools. It's, it's been found by courts. It's religion. 
They also can't outright teach the nonsense called intelligent design because whenever they have tried, uh, they've lost there too. And they actually had to, in, in a, uh, a forum where they actually had to defend that logically. But they won't give up. This bill is just one more attempt to create some wiggle room to get intelligent design into, this, into the classroom. The Tennessee House had already passed a version of this bill last April, so now it's just a matter of ironing out the details. Indiana has a similar bill. I mean, Indiana and Tennessee are becoming the usual suspects here. Indiana has a similar bill moving through its legislature. Oklahoma, New Hampshire, Missouri have also considered similar bills. And, you know, I got to tell you, at a time when the federal assessment, the, the National Assessment of Educational Progress, this federal assessment, says that less than half of U.S. students are proficient in science, Tennessee's close your eyes and it will go away approach to science is indeed the outrage of the week. All right, finally, finally here. This is a topic that deserves a much fuller treatment than I'm going to give it here. Um, this deserves you know, a whole show, more, multiple shows. Um, but um, I do want to address some of it here um, with the hope that maybe in the future I'll be able to give it a, do it more justice. The topic is quite simple. The outrage involved is quite obvious. It is the persistence of bigotry in our society. Um, I've been talking about uh, some of the war on women. Well, they're not the only targets of bigotry here. I'm going to give you two recent examples. Indiana, again. Indiana has a large number of specialty license plates. You know, you pay an extra fee and you get this special plate for your, for your car. Uh, and when I worked in Indiana, there were, there were dozens of them, and apparently there are more now. Well, this year, an outfit called the Indiana Youth Group was approved for a specialty plate after several years of trying. Now, you're going to see, this is the plate. This is the plate. Uh, it's a very simple, very decorative plate. And obviously, your own license number goes where the word plate is. Thing is, the Indiana Youth Group is a support group for gay and lesbian young folks. Well, when the fine, upstanding members of the Indiana legislature learned about this, they were not going to stand for it. Especially not after the notoriously right-wing American Family Association, which is actually listed as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center, which keeps track of these things. They were going to stand for it after the American Family Association told them that having this plate was, in effect, the state was promoting the homosexual agenda to children. So in the last week of the legislative session in Indiana, uh, some lawmakers tried various ways to get this plate canceled. Um, when those failed, they turned to getting the group's contract with the state revoked. This, they wanted to do this based on a claim of a technical violation of the contract, one which, if it is a violation, is one of which almost everybody, every other group that has a specialty plate is equally guilty, as that was confirmed by a representative of the State Bureau of Motor Vehicles. Didn't matter, no matter. On March 16th, the contract was voided, the plate was canceled. Um, a day after that, BMV spokesperson was fired. Okay, and then we have this. This image went viral. Some claimed it was photoshopped, but some folks at Yahoo located a website that uh, that actually sold these bumper stickers. And in case you can't read it, what it says is, don't renege in 2012. The owner of the site insisted that this is not racist, that she doesn't have a racist bone in her body. In fact, she likes black children. In fact, just to show how not racist she is, she insisted that the N-word uh, is not racist. By the way, dictionary.com says the word is now probably the most offensive word in the English language. Another site that it appears uh, actually produced such stickers and others 
was called Stumpy Stickers. And among the entries in, this, in its catalog of delights was this winner. All right, take that down. I didn't even want to know that's there, okay? I mean, I can't even see it. I, I just don't want, I want it, I want it gone. And there's something else that I don't want. I don't want a single hint from a single person, anywhere, anytime. I don't want anybody to come to me and breathe a single word saying that we are a post-racial society. Anyone who says that is lying, either to you or to themselves. I don't know which. But the fact is, we are suffused with racism, with sexism, with homophobia, that we are steeped in our bigotry to the point where it penetrates our souls. Yes, yes, it is getting better. Yes, it has been worse in the past. Yes, gay rights are gaining ground. Yes, even in the torrent of anti-woman legislation going on, there's only so far the clock can be turned back. We will not have to refight all of the old battles. And yes, we can see an impact. We can see how bigotry uh, is now usually expressed with a wink and a nod. It's expressed in dog whistles, not in the kind of overt filth that I just showed you. We can even see it in the fact that the woman with that first bumper sticker, she doesn't sell them anymore. And stumpy stickers, it's gone. It's vanished. Back into the hole from which it came. But here's the thing. If you, as an adult, sitting there watching this, if you want to think, if you want to try to argue to me that the attacks on women's rights have nothing to do with sexism, if you want to argue to me that homophobia is not what brought down that license plate in Indiana, if you want to argue to me that racism has nothing to do with why Trayvon Martin is dead and George Zimmerman is still walking around free, if you want to argue that to me, I'm going to tell you now I want nothing to do with you. And neither should any other member of decent society with a decent conscience and two synapses to rub together. All right, I guess I'm done. I'm, I'm out of, just about out of time. Got about probably a minute left. I'm out of time, and I'm pretty much out of energy. Um, I do want to say again, this is public TV. If you think that I'm full of it, come down here and do your own show, okay? Uh, this is your station, um, and you should take advantage of it. Um, I'd like to see that schedule on Channel 13 here in Carver and, and the channels in Plymouth. I'd like to see them filled up with, um, with, with programs. But with that, I'm going to leave you. Uh, I'm going to say enjoy the spring. Happy spring. Uh, have the best week you possibly can. We will see you next week. <laughs>